Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name is Michaela, and as you all know, this whole COVID-19 thing is one of the most dumpster fiery things to happen in 2020 that I could think of. And we had actual fires in 2020. One of the most frustrating parts for me as a scientist is the fact that the tests for these things exist, but the technology just can't get distributed correctly to make any kind of difference. The technology might as well not exist if people can't use it to help each other. In light of that, I decided that since I've basically done these reactions in grad school, I have all the engineering knowledge I need to figure out how to build one of these things. And I have a pretty good knowledge of lab techniques since I work in a lab. Uh, I'm gonna try to build a COVID-19 test at home. The hope of this is that I can maybe put all of my research notes online, people can copy it or replicate it, and then do their own tests for if they suspect they have COVID-19. Maybe if we can do this for cheap enough, A, it'll get people interested in engineering and science, but B, it'll give them a way to make their own test without having to rely on a broken government to make the tests for us. Also, seeing if I can make an actual test for this completely on a budget using my own technology really makes me feel like Iron Woman. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to try to Tony Stark up a test in my house. So enough introing, let's get to work. Okay, so how does one actually build a test for any kind of virus? The method is called polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Is that backwards? Does the phone take video backwards? PCR. Woo! Yeah. Look at this. I drew it and I will now explain it. Okay, so step one is you have to take a sample from a person and that sample is going to have a bunch of stuff in it. It's gonna have their cells, it's gonna have their allergens, it's gonna have their DNA, it's gonna have a lot of stuff in there. So what you need to do is you need to figure out how to get that sample, spin it down, and isolate the DNA from that sample. Once you get the DNA from that sample, you're gonna have a bunch of DNA from the person, from pollen, and in theory, if they have the virus, you're gonna have a little bit of COVID-19 DNA once you extract all the DNA from the sample. Unfortunately, there's gonna be way too little of that DNA to actually measure. There's no way you'll be able to see it with all the other DNA overpowering the COVID DNA. Okay, so you've got the DNA, right? And there's a mystery DNA of COVID in there and you need to figure out if it's there or not. So what polymerase chain reaction does is it actually amplifies whatever type of DNA you want as long as you have the template for it. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna buy primers, which are shortened strands of DNA, and make it so that they match your COVID strand of DNA. These are very important because you're gonna be buying these and you're gonna be buying enzymes, such as DNA polymerase and buffers and some reagents. Mix that all together, you're gonna to have your perfect mixture for your PCR reaction. The DNA polymerase is going to take a potential COVID DNA strand and your primer DNA, along with a bunch of other random base pairs, and it's going to copy it. This is gonna copy and make two different DNA segments. Then those two DNA segments will get ripped apart, combined with more primers, get amplified, and then it's gonna make four DNA segments. And this is going to continue on. Importantly, non-COVID DNA does not multiply because your primers only work for COVID. So all this other junk DNA is not gonna get multiplied, only the orange piece. So once the orange piece gets multiplied, you're gonna to go to here. And ideally you'll go from a mostly blue DNA vial with a vial with mostly COVID DNA. And then you're gonna run it through what's called DNA gel electrophoresis. It's going to send an electrical current through the sample. And then these DNA nucleotides are actually gonna move up depending on how heavy they are. Ideally, if you have a bunch of one type of DNA, it's gonna form a big lump in one specific part of the what's called a gel. And this is what we're looking for. This is the big amplified target DNA piece. And then as long as you weigh that against your control and make sure it weighs the same thing, you win. It's, it's super confusing to explain, but um, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments, yeah? So 
Obviously this process is kind of a lot more complicated than how I just explained it. You have to do a lot of work to make sure that your primers are very well designed because you don't design your primers the right way, uh, the reaction is not going to work. You need to make sure your primers are specific to COVID-19, which involves a lot of genomic searching um, and extra research on top of that. So this is a very complicated project here, um, especially because if we're trying to do this at home, we have none of the instruments. We don't have the thing for the PCR reaction. We don't have the GNA electrophoresis machine. We got nothing. Before we do any of this, we're going to need to make those machines. So step one, I guess, is make the machines for this reaction. Uh, then we can do the whole PCR reaction and actually try to test for this thing. But first things first, we need to figure out how we are going to make the machine that actually does the PCR reaction. And that machine, it's called a thermocycler. I swear to God, I'm not making these names up. All right, so basically your thermocycler is a gigantic heater. It's going to be heating and cooling very rapidly this mixture that we've made uh, to three different temperature ranges. The first is going to be the denaturation range. Um, essentially, this is around 94 to 98C, um, and it's going to be responsible for getting the DNA to split apart. Um, we need the DNA to split apart so that, remember, our DNA polymerase can get inside and start replicating the target COVID strands. And then it needs to rapidly cool down to 50 to 65 degrees C, which is the annealing range. This will allow the enzyme to link up to the separate DNA strands and begin the replication process. Lastly, it needs to heat it up to 72 C, which is the elongation range. Uh, this will allow the spare nucleotides in the solution to combine with the enzyme and allow the DNA to be replicated across both of the strands. The end result is you'd go from one strand to two. But this thermocycler needs to be able to quickly and accurately heat and cool our sample to these three different temperature ranges. We're not going to get there with just the stove, so we need something way more precise. It was at this point where the research had to begin for real. If I'm going to try to build this thermocycler, I needed to know if it was actually possible. Not only that, I needed to make sure that the way that we could build it was within our own budget. It had a lot of searching, a lot of Googling, um, but by the end, I had a pretty good idea of how to actually build a thermocycler in a way that was budget friendly and doable with the technology that I already have. I love the internet so much. There's literally a blog post on making a thermocycler for the PCR reaction just online, just, just there. It's not exactly what we need, but I think I can modify it to be exactly perfect for this application. And the best part is that it's using Arduino tech, which I have those in my room already. So I don't need to spend money on the computer bits. So after some reading and adaptation, uh, some more studying was needed just to make sure that I did have the knowledge to make this thing. And I also needed to know what other parts of the project existed. Did we need more materials? Is it possible to do the rest of the steps? Um, this next research was really just to affirm that I didn't waste a bunch of money building a thermocycler only to have it fail at the very next step. The other issue we needed to solve was how are we going to test for the coronavirus without contracting the coronavirus. So update number two, I think that rather than trying to validate this technology with an actual coronavirus, which would be stupid and very dangerous, um, we'll just validate it with some common protein in human saliva. That way I'll be able to use my own spit to run the validation test to make sure that our machines work. I think we'll be able to make this. I've been doing some research on how to make it. I have an idea. Um, have the plans all set up and I've actually started ordering all of the things online that we would need. And it turns out we can make this thing for under a hundred dollars. I'm so excited. Um, there is a budget way to make this thermocycler and that's going to be the subject of the next video. Anyway, I uh, hope you learned a little bit something new. Hope you're as psyched for this project as I am. Um, so stay tuned for next time when I start building it.